I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. This week, we're learning the Ten Commandments, and today we're focusing on Commandments 4 and 5. Now, Numbers 4 and 5 are not as intimately related as Numbers 1 and 2 or 3 and 7, so let's consider them individually. Now, the fourth commandment goes like this. You hold up your four fingers on one hand, you look at them and you say, Commandment number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy because that's what it's there for, right? Did I mention this is the way we teach children? That's what it's there for. Uh, Exodus 20 verses 8 through 11 says this, Remember the Sabbath day and set it apart for God. You have six days to labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. And on it you are not to do any kind of work, not you, your son, or your daughter, not your male and female slave, not your livestock, and not the foreigner who's staying with you inside the gates of your property. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in it, but on the seventh day he rested, and that's why the Lord blessed the day, the Sabbath, and separated it for himself. You know, a friend of mine one asked, once asked me if I observe the Sabbath as the Lord has commanded, and that is that I have a complete day of rest. And I had honestly never even considered that question before. I figured that going to church was pretty much the end of the question there. But I don't know that that's true. Sometimes we get so busy trying not to break the other commandments, I suppose, that we overlook the command to actually do nothing. So I want to challenge you with the very same question that the man posed to me. How well are you obeying God's command to set aside an entire day for rest? And I'm not talking about setting aside a couple of hours to go to a church service. I'm not talking about setting aside a day to go out and play, because in our extreme sports culture, we work at our play. No, I'm challenging you, as the Bible does, to set aside a day where you simply do nothing. Try it. Test the Lord at His Word. It's not as easy as you think. God has to make His sheep lie down in green pastures. Now let's focus on the fifth commandment. So the way we do this is we hold up a high five, right? And we look at your hand. There's five. Uh, and here's what the Bible says, honor your father and mother. And then the thing that we do is we kind of wave it down here, right? Honor your father and mother like you're spanking a child. <laughs> I'm not advocating child abuse. I'm just saying that when I was a kid growing up, if you disobeyed your mom and dad, you probably got a spanking. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 says this, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land which the Lord is giving to you. You know, in our generation, we've lost much of the sense of honor and respect for authority. Even in my lifetime, I've seen it slip. And perhaps there's certain Asian communities or Eastern communities where their cultures are sort of like the last holdout in general for honoring elders. So I suppose that People from those cultures who become believers have a bit of a, uh, an advantage. But the rest of God's people need to step up. Uh, honoring your father and mother. You know, the biblical command to honor father and mother means so much more than just obeying them. It means to pursue a life of faithfulness, which brings honor to their faithfulness to the Lord. It, it assumes that your parents have continued in a path of faith which was originated by the patriarchs, that this trend of faithfulness led God's people to the land of blessing and promised uh, that was promised in His Word, and that they have imparted God's Word to you. Therefore, it is now your duty to continue in that faith. Why? So that it will eventually be imparted to the next generation. And that brings honor to your parents as you become the fulfillment of God's promise to them. When he said, hey, if you will honor me, and this will pass down throughout the generations. So honoring their faithfulness to the Lord validates the sacrifices that they made to ensure that a legacy of faith and blessing would be perpetuated 
and the family throughout the generations. It's more than simply obeying your parents. Suppose your parents are against you following Jesus. Suppose they are flat out prohibit you from surrendering to the gospel. There's some cultures that are that way. Well, then you actually bring honor to them by disobeying those wishes. How is that? Well, by surrendering to the gospel, you begin a legacy of faith in the Lord, which then begins a legacy of blessing through the Lord that would otherwise uh, have not existed. So becoming the first Christian in your family begins this legacy of faith for future generations to honor after you. You know, between the ages of 12 to 25, people generally experience the strongest temptations or, or they, they pull themselves away from parental and spiritual authority. And during this season of life, a natural process of maturity begins in which people naturally desire to leave the nest and eventually they set out on their own. And in the midst of this natural process, Satan tries to upset that process by fueling that detachment with rebellion. Sadly, too often, Satan leads young Christians to find fault in their Christian heritage. And this disenchantment leads to disengagement with the Lord. They adopt whole new value systems outside of His Word, which dishonor the traditions of faith which they were brought up in. And the end result is that so many who grew up in church disengage from the Lord altogether. Hey, don't allow Satan to hijack your faith and thus God's blessing of your future. You know, a major component to fulfilling the fifth commandment and to reaping its articulated blessing is to establish your value system according to the Bible. That's why Groundworks Ministries exists for instance. And the best way to do that is to never stop seeking God's Word. So now let's review these commandments that we have learned. Can you name them all so far? Let's check it out. Number one, right? There's only one God. Like I say, the easiest commandment to, to name. Somebody calls you, say, so do you know any of the commandments? Be the first one. Oh, there's only one God. The second one is like it. There's not two gods, so don't make any more. No idols, no graven images to bow down to. Remember, three and seven deal with infidelity or unfaithfulness. Number three is don't receive the Lord's name in vain, right? Don't say that you're a child of the king and still live as if you're pursuing the world. Number four, we learned it today. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy because that's what it's there for. Number five, honor your father and mother, and you will live long in the land that the Lord has given to you. And then, of course, number seven, do not commit adultery. Hey, you're doing great. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com. <music>